We're five days away from primary elections in my home state of Pennsylvania. And the race for the GOP Senate nomination, it is certainly heating up. Only a few percentage points separate the three frontrunners, a gap that has tightened in the past month, at least according to Fox News polling. TV personality Dr. Mehmet Oz got a boost in support after he was endorsed by former President Trump. It pushed him ahead of businessman David McCormick in the polls. But Kathy Barnett, a conservative outsider, has gained significant ground in the past month, in part after she posted this campaign ad explaining her stance on abortion. But then I saw her age, and she was 12. And that just really struck a chord in me because I realized just how young my mother was when something so horrible had visited upon her. Even to this day, it's a very hard word to say, but my mother was raped. John Delano from our Pittsburgh affiliate KDKA, a legendary station, joins us now for more. John, thanks for being here. Let's start with Kathy Barnett and her recent surge in popularity among those core Trump supporters in Pennsylvania. We saw the ad, but beyond that, why is Barnett rising at this late stage? Well, first, Bob, always good to be with you, my fellow Pennsylvanian from the other end of the state. I have uh, had the chance to uh, talk to Kathy Barnett a number of times throughout this campaign. And I will tell you, I mean, she's a very tough, gutsy, extreme MAGA person, somebody who clearly is America first and says so. You know, it's not as if she's a well-known household name in Pennsylvania, but in this crowded Senate primary, you only need 20, 22 percent perhaps to even win. And as long as you're getting one out of five votes, you're up there a tied for the lead. And that's exactly what's happened to her. I think there are a number of reasons for that, which we can explore if you'd like. But the bottom line is that uh, when you have two other candidates spending millions and millions trashing each other, and there's one person, an attractive woman who really has a message and is resonating with lots of people, I think uh, Kathy Barnett becomes a wonderful alternative to those who don't like the negative assault that Oz and McCormick have leveled at each other. That negative assault is an important point because the Trump endorsement provides a boost to candidates in some ways, but so uh, does uh, the Trump criticism. That also has power in a primary race. And Trump has gone after David McCormick as some kind of Wall Street character. Has that hurt McCormick's ability to gain ground? Well, I think it's hurt somewhat. But the fact is that uh, President Trump himself has said good things about Dave McCormick. And they have him on camera saying these good things in a television ad that McCormick is running right from the Oval Office. The president is saying good things about McCormick. And of course, then there's a lot of folks who have negative things about, say, about Mehmet Oz, uh, simply because he's accused of flip-flopping on issues like abortion and guns and the like. And so there's plenty of fodder on both sides to go after both these guys. Uh, both Oz and McCormick uh, clearly have their negatives. And when you have someone on the other side willing to spend $10 million across Pennsylvania to trash each other, that's exactly what happens. So I think in both Oz's case and in McCormick's case, it's very hard for them to rise too much above that 22, 23 percent level. What about Dr. Mehmet Oz? Where is he going in the final days? What are you hearing? Well, he is campaigning, and certainly he's campaigned hard, particularly here in western Pennsylvania. He spent a lot of time in the Pittsburgh area. We've got a lot of Republicans here, and uh, the Trump rally for him in Greensburg, which is just about an hour's uh, drive east of Pittsburgh. Uh, But the fact is that, uh, you know, it's been a television campaign for both McCormick and for us throughout. And while they do hold their events, and an event with the former president, of course, got a lot of attention, a lot of publicity. Uh, But uh, I think this has been very much a television campaign for Mehmet Oz uh, from the get-go, because he's never really had the grassroots organizations and the grassroots support that some of the other candidates, like Dave McCormick, who has picked up support from party chairs, 
throughout the uh, 67 counties of the region. Some caucuses in the Republican Party have backed McCormick. Oz doesn't have that. He has individual, a few individual legislators, lawmakers, members of Congress who have endorsed him. But other than President Trump, it hasn't been a solid ground game like we see for McCormick. Interesting. Uh, on the other side uh, of the political spectrum, the Democratic governor of Pennsylvania is term limited after two terms. Nine Republicans and only one Democrat are vying for the job, if that's right. Could the Democrats be hamstrung uh, by having just one contender, Josh Shapiro? Or are they feeling pretty confident that Shapiro, the state's attorney general, is their guy for the general? Well, let me talk about Josh Shapiro in just a minute, but just breaking news. It's now dropped from nine Republicans to eight Republicans because President Pro Tem, State Senate uh, President uh, Jake Corman has just dropped out of the race this afternoon and it has endorsed former Congressman Lou Barletta for the governor's position. So we're down to eight Republicans for governor, which is still a lot in the Republican Party. Josh Shapiro is, you know, he's worked some magic here. He's convinced the moderate Democrats that he's a moderate. And he has the liberal Democrats, the progressive Democrats, really loving him for being a progressive. There were absolutely no other Republic or Democrats, rather, who wanted to run against him in the Democratic primary. It probably didn't hurt that Josh Shapiro also had millions and millions and millions of dollars from fundraising. He has been the attorney general of Pennsylvania. He's been a very activist attorney general mostly on consumer issues, many times on consumer issues. But he also led a battle against uh, priests who uh, abused children. That became a very high profile case. And then in Western Pennsylvania, he negotiated a settlement between two insur large insurance health care providers that wanted to deny coverage to the, the patients of the other. And he negotiated a deal on that, which made him very popular in western Pennsylvania. So he's a strong Democrat running for governor of Pennsylvania in a Republican year. I would still say the odds favor the Republicans for both governor and Senate, but it all depends on who gets nominated on Tuesday by the Republican Party. And who is your uh, pick for governor on the Republican side, not politically speaking, but as a political analyst, right. who, who is best positioned to win the GOP gubernatorial mm -hmm. nomination? Yeah, it's a great question. And of course, I always try to be a little careful on this. Most of the polls are suggesting that State Senator Doug Mastriano, who is a, a very MAGA warrior, he is somebody who actually uh, hired buses to bring people to the January 6th events in Washington, D.C. He believes very strongly that President Trump carried Pennsylvania in 2020. He led the initial investigation of that effort in the state Senate. Um, he has a core group of folks who support him. And some of the most recent polling suggests that he could be ahead by as much as 10 points. Others suggest it's a lot closer. But it is driving some of the Republican establishment in Pennsylvania crazy. I'm getting calls on my cell phone and text messages, you know, out the wazoo because they're concerned that Doug Mastriano would lose to Josh Shapiro because he's considered to be so extreme, so far to the right. Um, it remains to be seen whether Republicans can really block him, other Republicans can block him in the race for governor. But he is certainly the odds on favorite. It's why I think we're seeing movement towards Lou Barletta, the other strong candidate, Dave White, and Bill McSwain. But when you have so many alternatives to uh, sort of the MAGA candidate, it's really, really tough to defeat, I think, in Pennsylvania. Josh Shapiro, I've been covering him for over a decade. I remember when he was a chief of staff for, I believe, Congressman Joe Hoffel uh, down there yeah. in southeastern Pennsylvania. Then he became deputy speaker of the state house. He's had quite a career in a short time. John Delano, thank you so much for your insights from the Keystone State, the Commonwealth, as we say. The Commonwealth, indeed. Great to be 